from a flightless simulator at Ferris Air to a momentous meeting in an alley to the complex mind of an architect to every far sector in space and to the brilliance of the central power battery on OA. This is the podcast that covers the adventures of all of your favorite ring slingers. This is the Emerald Echo with your hosts, Adam and the Emerald Enthusiast. Welcome to another episode of Emerald Echo, a Green Lantern podcast. As always, I'm your host, Adam, and with me, as always, is my co-host, the Emerald Enthusiast himself, Donnie. Donnie, how's it going? Hey, what's up, Lantern fans? It's the man who's ring runs on Fanboy Energy, the podcasting machine, and I'm usually the big nerd in green. However, much like John Cena, you can't see me right now, but we're still here with a very special, oh, uh, no, excuse me, uh, a mundane, regular old episode of Emerald Echo. <laughs> <laughs> Well, look, it is different uh, in the sense that you can't see us again. Uh, so we're embracing our intern, John Cena. Yeah. But we're, the reason why you can't see us is because when we started this podcast uh, slash vidcast, a couple of the things that we promised to do was we promised to highlight uh, the comic books, which I think we've done a, a, a decent job of, not to pat ourselves on the back too much. But... Uh, and the other thing we, pro- we promised to do was to do commentaries for the uh, Green Lantern, the animated series. And yes. That, and that is what we're doing today. The first episode. Well, the yes. first two. because stick really First works. two, Beware My Power, parts one and two. Mm-hmm. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, we've been looking, I, we've been looking forward to this. Um, I love this series. Um, oh man, I, you know, the first time around it was so much fun. I can't believe that it's been over ten years since this was on. But this going back every time that I go back, I find different things and new aspects that makes me appreciate it even more. Right, uh, I agree a hundred percent. And it should have never been canceled, but. Should at least have one more season. Hey, and you never know. Now with HBO Max, you never know. And especially if the live action series is a success, maybe we'll get another season of this. Yeah, yeah you never know, and uh, and uh, that's why we got to support the live action series when it comes. Because if we show support and put support behind us, behind it, that only does wonders for. Uh, more Green Lantern content, which could mean a, a revival of, of this. So um, that's why I always say, don't just scoff at something immediately. At least give it a chance and try and support it, because it could be helpful for the brand and for the IP. So uh, that, that's why we say what we always say here. But why don't we uh, why don't we get right into it, Donnie? Uh, okay, so. What you'll need to do is start at the very first moment of the intro. That's where we're going to start. We're going to give you a countdown. Then we're going to unpause it. And from that point on, through the end of the credits, we're going to be doing a commentary. And we'll start episode two the same way. Indeed. Well, episode two doesn't really... uh, The the way I'm watching, I think it goes right right through uh, uh, concurrently. Does yours... I'm not sure if mine. I think mine does that, but yeah, I think we'll make sure one. to keep you up to speed. We want we want you with us on this journey yes. through Green Lantern and the animated series. And here we go. So I'll do a three second countdown. Ready? Yes. And then when I say play, that's when you play. Ready? Yes. All right, everybody's queued up. Not that All I right, can get. Let's go, people. Not, not Charge your rings. A, not that I can get a response from the people that are listening to this, but I assume that you're you're with us here. So here we go. Countdown is commencing. Three, two, one, play. And here we go. Love this intro. Very creative. Love all the energies. Now, who is this Green Lantern? Man? Give us some. Quick background. Mitten. 
Okay, it was. <laughs> Actually, I think it said Maten, but it's M apostrophe T E N, Maten. Okay. Yeah, and he is not someone from the comics. Okay. That's what I was trying to get at. Were you surprised are quite, to see a, a red lantern this early on? You know, I was surprised and, and happy that they went with the red lanterns and the fact that they didn't go immediately to Sinestro or the Manhunters. Mm -hmm. They trusted themselves with what was working at the time. Yeah. So that's Razor there. That is Razor, another original character. Not this Razor Ramon. Yeah. Who's now, Zelias is from the comics. Yes, yeah, he, he looks familiar. Yeah. Would have been funny if it were. Can you imagine Razor Ramon as a Red Lantern? <laughs> hey, Chico, look at this construct. <laughs> the toothpick would be a construct. <laughs> he would hit people with giant construct toothpicks. Yeah. All right, so here we have. Test pilot now. Oh, Gordon, you're seeing a little bit of that. Okay, I'm at the right now. Matand is losing his hand. Oh, crap. I'm a little ahead of you. Okay. We'll pause it for a second and let it catch up. All right. Let me know when you get to. 18 uh, months later. Here we go, Hal Jordan. All right. Let me know. Okay. Let me know when. Uh, Carol, Carol is, is talking coffee. into the microphone. There Let we go. When she's drinking her coffee. Okay. She has her cup, and there's the drink of coffee. Okay. <laughs> like, <laughs> plane go fast. Yeah. And now there's some shaking going on. Earthquake is in this episode. <laughs> I really love the animation, Donnie. It's just oh, it's so fluid. I love it very, so much. Very Pixar, you know. Very uh, Buzz Lightyear, you know. Uh, I'm thinking of uh, Toy Story, damn it. Yeah. I, I just love the origin. Oh, he's already a Green Lantern here, but you know what I mean. Yeah. Uh, I love it. Yeah. Stopping a train, very Superman. You know. Look at that. That's amazing. Exactly. And yeah, look at the construct. Look, you know, it's it looks like energy. It's not just, you know, they didn't just make a perfunctory effort with the energy. It just looks so good. And bam! <laughs> That's kind of like me remembering a Leafs game during some, you know, some weeks. Yeah, when they crash and burn. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, they really get the dynamic between the two of these characters right here early yeah. on. It's not the main focus, and it shouldn't be. That's not why you're watching a show like this, but it feels real. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Like You can tell there's history between them. No, I know. I mean, I know this is like CG, so it's, it's different. But I, the animation is in league with, pun intended, you know, the, <laughs> the DCAU, you know, that Bruce Tim started way back when. Would you at some point like to see a Justice League series with this, this style of animation? Oh, I would love it. Yeah. I thought, I mean, and, and some people are going to, I'm going to get hate for this. I don't mean to. I love the Justice League show, but I think this computer animation actually looks a little bit better yeah. than the hand-drawn animation. And I'm usually a fan of hand-drawn animation, yeah, but yeah. I would love to see you know characters like Superman or you know even uh, the other Lanterns in this style. Yeah, I just think it works so well. Yeah, it's the next evolution of where to go with it. And you can make a big screen Justice League movie with this kind of animation. I'm just saying. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. But. Uh... Here we go. We're, we're going to Oa. Right. Love the, love the look of Oa. Yeah. Reminds me of like a Tron movie. Look at the quick flight there. I mean, the animation, yeah, just, oh, it's so amazing.
Love Kilowog. No place like Oa. <laughs> there is luck. He's Sligian. Mm. Yeah, Sligia is his home planet. Yes. Indeed. Amen. Now we're seeing the Guardians. Yeah, here come the little blue gnomes, as Guy Gardner calls them. They look great, too. Right. You know who played Ganted, right? Oh, yes. I he love was. the Blue Lantern Oath. Yeah. He passed away. Yeah, it was... Uh, uh, what was his name? Uh, uh, crap. Uh, all I know is that he played Alfred on Birds of Prey. He right. <laughs> he was a good Alfred, too. Ian Abercrombie. There we go. Yeah, thank you. Such a good Alfred. Yep. Good Ganton, obviously. And I like how you can differentiate the Guardians here with the hairstyles, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Appa Aliopsa has, you know, the the horseshoe head, and Ganthet has the skullet. And, yeah. Some of them have hair, some of them don't. Right, you know. Ganthet has the Hulk, Hulk Hogan hairline. Right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. If it was if it was blonde instead of white. I can't remember. Does he call Hal Jordan brother at all in this series? Do what? Does he call Hal Jordan brother at all in this series? <laughs> I was when just he, thinking it would be cool to watch Ganth and Hulk up in a fight. When he's sending him on a mission. Let me tell you something, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you something, Sinestro. <laughs> And I like that they bring up the sectors here. Yeah, it's a very... Yeah. By the way, Frontier Space is another thing that was an invention for this show. Yeah. Because there's a lot, you know, we've had in the past in Green Lantern comics, you've had dark sectors and unknown sectors, and most recently far sectors, but not a frontier sector. So you do have kind of similar sectors in the comics but nothing specifically called frontier sectors that i ever remember yeah that's a unique uh but this is a very uh good uh sort of primer and intro for people who are not familiar with the green lantern the oh lantern. i still think this is the most comprehensive non-print, you know, Green Lantern adaptation we've ever seen. So because this, this really recommend. delves deeply into the mythos. This is what you would recommend to a newbie. Yes. If you, you know, if you're watching something for the first time, you've never read the comics, you want to know what it's about. I think this is more enjoyable, even than the, the animated movies, and we're both fans of those. But this really gives you the flavor of the core. Hmm. And I also really like the fact that they have, you know, Gant that his emotions have put him at odds with the other Guardians in the past. And mm -hmm. I like that you see him kind of breaking from the Guardians here and, and helping the core and having this special relationship with Kilowog and Hal Jordan. Yeah, yeah. It's very personable. And you don't really see that with the other Guardians. And I think it's smart to like showcase, you know, I, there's a, there's a, you know, they, they introduce a ship, which is going to come. Yeah, the interceptor. Yeah, yep. yeah, right. And it very yep. made, it it really for me it, it was cool because it, it it gives a Star Trek vibe, which I you know I'm a fan of Star Trek. Yeah. And I and I know Jeffrey Thorne is too, so it kind of oh yes. a Star, Star Trek vibe to it, which I like.
I'm so glad that they, they did indeed go with the Red Lanterns. I think that, that was cool. Because they're a natural... Oh, most like, definitely. Like, they're, them being, you know, full of rage and hate. It makes them... A and I like how you see their energy is like, it looks hotter and more unstable than the Green Lantern energy. Yeah, 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 yeah. But they seem like a, a natural enemy in terms of because mm -hmm. you know, of their disposition. And we have another lantern here. This is Sheer Rev. This is another lantern who was written for the series. Okay. Also, Razor is another you know original character. I think I said that already, but you said yeah, yeah. Yeah, I really wanted. I was hoping for eventually like a six inch Razor figure, mm. and I really like what Hal does here when he tries to pull one over on the Owen Tech. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With, with the, <laughs> and he tries to imitate Ken. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't gonna work. <laughs> and it runs at the kilowatt, so it's uh, yeah. <laughs> literally. Yeah, you know, by this point, kilowatt's got to know, you know, the kind of things that he does, and he's waiting for him. So, yeah, because he's an established Green Lantern already. So, yeah. <clears throat> and there's Hal thinking about women again. Can't blame him. <laughs> I know the feeling, Hal. I know. <laughs> I, re I really love how the green looks, like how metallic it looks. Mm. How it shines, like yeah. it reflects the light around it. Yeah. Mm, look at that. And again, it makes sense that Hal would, would be comfortable. Pi like, he's a test pilot, so having him Yeah, pilot I mean, that's... Yeah, that that's an aspect of his character, you know, separate from his from his power ring, you know. Yeah. That's one of the things that makes him dangerous, you know, or an, or an effective hero, even if he doesn't have his ring on. He yeah, is, he you know, use, an expert pilot. Yeah, you know, he gets he's used tough. In situation, yeah. Yeah. Pretty name for a pretty girl. <laughs> Don't you ever stop, Jordan? No, he does not. <laughs> but does he have a list? <laughs> you got a multiverse wives list, Jordan. <laughs> and that would have been a good point for Gansett to go, oh, I have some gum on my shoe or something, you know, to like d <laughs> distract yeah. all the guardians from. All they had to do was get over that opening <laughs> to deflect the situation, yeah. Yeah, exactly. I also like how the Guardians fly. Like, it's not, you know, the way that, like, Superman or other beings do. They great, just kind of very, float. Very calm and graceful, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The way that, you know, nigh immortal beings would, so. It seems like, the, like even this cartoon animation, it, it took an approach of, at least early on here. It's kind and look, of I, like how Gant, <laughs> I like how Gant looks over his shoulder, you know, slyly. Yeah. 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 And we, we see Hal's pilot skills come into play again here, too. Yeah, he's definitely going to traverse through a difficult situation. But yeah. like the idea that the early setup, it's, it's you know, it's, it's a Hal and Kilowog. Um, um, Green Lantern and other media, at least the way Warner Brothers seems to approach it, is almost like this buddy cop kind of scenario. Yes. Yeah. Right? You know, they're setting that up here, and, you know, in the rumored live action show coming up, we're going to have pairs of lanterns throughout different time periods. Mm -hmm. So that, you know, that, and then the movie's supposed to be Hal and John, and John. So that seems to be a running way that the studio wants to approach it. Mm hmm. Which I don't think is a bad way to do it. No, I would agree. And this gives me Star Wars vibes at this point. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Probably not good.
long. I love the action scenes. You, you, you talked about the fluidity earlier, but yeah, it's yes. Do you think the fact that this was CG made it more costly than if it was 2D? Oh, likewise, I would think so, especially back in you know 2011. But it was worth it. I mean, this is just this is so beautiful. Like I said, look at the difference in energy, the blasts between the right. red energy and you know the green energy. That tells a story in and of itself. That's visual storytelling. So, and it's like, don't you think at least in terms of visual look? That's a different ball game, but um, um, I really wanted a, a large size interceptor toy too. There was like a, oh, I think like a Happy Meal premium, but that was the only thing that came out. But look at that! I mean, and how making you know a giant hand construct? That's yeah, that's you know, very accurate to the comics. Yeah. I even like when coming up here, you know, Killaball goes, Red Lanterns? What are Red Lanterns? <laughs> Narts. <laughs> I like the kind of, you know, light, uh, nonsense profanity he uses throughout the series. And this was a good story for for Rev here. He uh, really touching, especially with you know the the story that comes up in episode two with his daughter. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Yeah, let's not uh, let's not spoil the fun. I wonder if there uh, if there are actually people um, spent the rest uh, of his long life making sure his ring was charged. Yeah, good call. I wonder if there are some people that, uh, how many people haven't seen um, 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 the, what, the live action movie or? No, the, this animated series. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, obviously, you know, it didn't get the response they wanted, but a lot of it, according to Josh Keaton, a lot of it had to do with the fact that they tried to make tie-in products and stores wouldn't buy it because they were confused about the difference. They didn't understand the difference between the live action movie and this. And so they were trying to push products to retailers and retailers were like, oh no, we already have Green Lantern stuff. Yeah, and so they didn't buy the products, and so you didn't get a lot of like tie-in product uh, profit. So I think it came down to uh, uh, toys was the big. Yeah, problem. that's what I'm saying. That's what that's, and that's according to Josh Keaton. So yeah. you know, that's that's an authority there. So I got to believe that that's what and happened. Yeah, you'd think he'd know, right? Right, exactly. So I really like this scene here, the way that. They built the drama to this to this moment, and the way he goes about recharging his ring. Mm. Mm. And again, you know, he and Kilowog working in tandem. I like that a lot. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, uh, that was such a cool visual. Him jumping into the. Oh, yes. Again, it's so heroic. Like, look at, like, mm -hmm. once he has a recharge and he gets back into action. Yeah. It's just. I like how he, you know, says his oath really quickly here. Yeah. Like when you see, watch when he, when he, when he's fully charged. And... <laughs> yeah. And see, this is classic Hal Jordan, you know, just going by instinct. Yeah, the seat of his pants. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, eat willpower, suckers. Bam. <laughs> mm. Love those visuals. 
Like I said, so even the mask is well done. Yeah. <laughs> I... And I like how Kill Killawog, you can almost hear him moving, like how heavy he is. Yes. You yes. know, when he walks, you, can, you know, your imagination, you can almost feel that and hear that, you know? Yeah, you really, really get a sense of the size of him. You know, you, mm -hmm. Maybe he could have been a little taller. I would have said that, but at least he's broad and big. So, yeah. all right. So I am now on the closing credits here. DC Comics, Warner Bros. Mm -hmm. Animation. Okay, let's get ready to play. All right, I'm getting ready to start part two here. Mm -hmm. And here we go. Main titles again. Mm -hmm. Captioning made possible by Warner Brothers Animation. Mm -hmm. I like Atrocitus' look, too. Right. They adapted that very well. He still looked monstrous. Yeah, but it you know fit with with the uh, the aesthetic here. Mm. He looks he looks great. Every character though. Mm. Beware my power, part two. And I like you know. Really, all of the lanterns over time, Kyle Rayner less so, but Guy and John and Hal have always kind of had some issues with the way the Guardians operate. And I like that they brought that out here. Mm. That you see early on that, you know, Hal, he questions the Guardians. He's not, you know, just somebody who's, you know, an extension of what they want him to be. He thinks for himself, as does Kilowog. Yeah, they're all very. I think they're most of them are have their own um, ideas, philosophies, mm -hmm. approaches to how to do things. Mm -hmm. You know, they're they're all unique. And I think that's necessary for you know characters who are known for their willpower. If they were always yeah, just kind of yeah. bending the knee to the guardians, yeah, you know that would that would undermine, you know, that part of the story. If they were all uniformly the same. Things would get kind of boring real fast. So you, you like yes, the yes, it would. That they're all unique. That's that's the the pleasure and the the enjoyment of of the Green Lantern IP to me is that you get a variety of, uh, of characters. Yeah. Here, here's an interesting thing too, where they talk about this not being recorded in the Book of Oa. You know, yeah. Obviously, the Guardians don't like to talk about the massacre of Space Sector Six Six Six. And with those kind of numberings, why would anybody really want to talk about it? <laughs> but, you know, again, we know, and this is brought up in the series, that that was, you know, a mistake the way that they programmed the Manhunters. So we'll get to that eventually, but that's from the comics. And again, yeah, I, I love the fact that it was very, it, it was very relatively modern. With, 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 you know, it had some modern touches in terms of the stories we were reading back at the time. Mm-hmm. So it felt very like the synergy with the book. <laughs> I like, yeah, I like how Aya says right there. Please do not let that happen again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was not pleasant, Hal Jordan. <laughs> <laughs> and I like how Hal's funny without being goofy. You know, just yeah. the right touch of humor. Yeah, it's a perfect amount of humor slash snark. Slash mm -hmm. attitude, you know. And that's a trope with you know, whenever there's an AI uh, presence or character, 
there's always one character that gives it attitude, like the banter back and forth is mm-hmm. is always on point. And like when looking at the alien characters, like you know, mm. the, the the CGI animation really is able to capture a distinctive look for for all the characters we're seeing on screen. <laughs> Nine months, Hal Jordan. You know, it's funny, but the the, the beeping ship of the the noise of the ship, it's again. Call back the very Star Star Trek kind of yeah sound very intricate sci-fi here yeah can either of you do that <laughs> you know John could have done that if he was there John Stewart could have built that part yeah I mean he would have had the blueprint yeah. <laughs> Just imagine if the toy line had sold better, we would have been we would have been seeing multiple seasons of this. Oh man, Ugh. it's a shame that that you know. And I, I, I may yet get someone to customize an Aya figure for me. So I wouldn't do. I, 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 wouldn't, I think you should do it because you know since I like enabling your collecting. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> It's not like I need a big push when it comes to action figures, let me tell exactly, you. Exactly. <laughs> and I love the look of the Red Lanterns here all together. Yeah. Mm. Mm. And even their locale is like it has similarities, but also differences to Oa. Yeah, yeah. And I like the fact, you know, the thing is, it's understandable what happened with Atrocitus. You understand his rage. You know, he's Absolutely. not he's not wrong. It's more of the, you know, the modus operandi after that, that he's willing to make sacrifices yeah, of innocent people. That's why he's the villain. It's not Absolutely. that his cause is unjust. Absolutely. I agree with that. Who did the voice of uh, Atrocitus? Um, I will look it up for I. The name escapes me right now, but I really like it. Was it Clancy Brown? No, I don't think so. Okay. It's escaping me. Like I said, it's espe- escaping me right now, but I'm going to look it up. Yeah, it's... And I like this dynamic setup right away too. How you know, Elias Zox, he's more than willing to throw a razor under the bus, you know, oh. to get in Atrocitus's good graces. Jonathan Adams. Oh, that's a new York thing. Yeah. Sounded very familiar. Yeah. Yeah, that would be nice to have a doctor as a wife. Yeah. Um, and I like how Kilowog, <laughs> he kind of uh, needles Hal about his mask here in a minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that is true. <laughs> He's got a point, though. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, it's more of a Silver Age holdover. You know, his secret identity was a big deal in the beginning. When it was more of an Earth-based comic, because really but, the domino, the domino effect, or the domino mask. When you think about it, what is that really disguising? Yeah, although I will say that in the comics they do make a point to say that the mask is so bright that it's difficult to look at Hal Jordan's face directly. Okay, that makes sense. So, so yes, there is something to that. 
I also remember, I, I'm pretty sure it's from volume four that the green parts are, the green parts are kind of hot of the, the, the costumes, the uniforms, they're right. hot and the, the black parts are cold. Okay. But again, that's more, that's a modern take because originally, you know, Hal was changing in and out of, of his, you know, uniform. Yeah, I, I and, remember some of those early issues that we did. Yeah. Well, he actually changed it to Ob and Sir's uniform, even though Ob and Sir just died in it. I was like, you might want to watch that, but that's, a that's what morbid. I do. That's a, <laughs> not only is it morbid, but it's not very hygienic. Yeah, it, it, that's what I thought, you know. Uh, mm. and I, I love the big projection here by Atrocitus in a minute. Yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. so intimidating. Miss the that, show so much. That, that's where the CGI animation really right there. enhances things and things like that. You know what I mean? Mm hmm Yeah. Man, this is really making me want to see a Justice League animated like this. Yes. Like so I would just I mean, look at that. Look how magnificent that looks. You know what's funny? The planet will be vaporized. Yeah. And I know you're not as keen on it, but um the 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 crypto uh, movie has this the animation. Oh, the animation looks good. Yeah, the animation. I can't I can't in any way object to that. That, that does look good. So. so so to me, like if that, how can I phrase this? If that does well at the box office, do you think they could say, well, this did well? Why not do a Justice League in that style? I would I would love it. Or I'd even take a Green Lantern movie in that style. Sure. Do we know? Well, maybe that, you know, maybe, you know, Beware My Power, that movie that they told us about. Do we know if that's 2D or 3D? No, we know no other details about it other than the name. Yeah. We don't know which lanterns are going to be in it, the villains. Yeah, just, just that it's animated, so... I think they should make that the movie with. Uh... And I also like. I want to point out here. I like that they set Razor up early as somebody who had a conscience. It wasn't just. Right. He didn't right. just see something and react. He was just, you know, because obviously he becomes a sympathetic character. He's like, you know, something's wrong here. Right. I love how they. This is. They... Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, as you can see. I love the way they've translated Atrocitus in terms of animation here. Mm -hmm. He doesn't look exactly like his, his comic counterpart, but it's enough that... Like they yeah, but still... Scary, they made him scary, but they toned down the scary. If that makes yeah. Sense. Well, and they changed the oath, too. You know, they had to make certain changes because this is a kid show. Yeah. So what are we going to say? Oh, I just like how complex it is. It's not, you know, the, the bad guys aren't all for one. The Green Lanterns aren't all for one. Everybody yeah. has their own personalities and they yeah. have their own points. And Absolutely. you see those come into conflict. And you see how Jordan's flying ability come into play there again. Those simple touches, you know, doing that kind of flying pattern there. And this is how you make a show that is accessible to... Both kids and adults by by making those subtle changes, mm -hmm. you know, it, it it makes it palatable for kids. But also by giving each lantern their own personality, makes it enjoyable for adults. Mm -hmm. Allowing for character growth, so that they're not just. And I mean, you know, the, the story here with Rev, I mean, it has a lot of heart, you know. Yeah. You know, now that McFarlane has the license for DC, I, you know, I would love to see them do some figures. Oh, of course. I mean, I I hope that that, you know, that Blackest Night set comes out, but I would love to see you know, figures from this. I mean, they already did, you know, John Stewart in the animated style. There's no reason that they couldn't do some more characters from this style. 
Right. In fact, I think one of us that at least Hal is supposed to come eventually in this style for McFarlane. Could be wrong about that, but I think I read that somewhere that that's on the, you know, um, that's on, on kind of the to do list from that company. So it's on the list, but not that list. Okay. <laughs> different li different list. So many lists. How does Santa keep track of everything? I don't know. <laughs> Speaking of, I bet Santa would. I bet Santa would like this episode because there's a lot of red and green. Yeah, he would, and I, I like that this episode really gives us some more one-on-one -on -one fights between Atrocitus and yeah. and how. Yeah. Speaking of, do you know what's black and white and red all over? No. Half a zebra. <laughs> I had to get a dad joke in there. It's in my yeah. contract. It, it is. I have to do this. <laughs> what is I that actually just heard that. I heard that on Elimination Chamber. <laughs> oh, did you? Okay. Yeah. Who said, who said it? Uh, one of the announcers said it. I can't remember who it was, but I just cracked up. I was like, that's it's going in, you know, the that's going in the dad joke tank. That's got to be, you know, that's got to be, you know, part of the, uh, part of the Maybe repertoire. WWE is going to sue us now, Donnie. Because <laughs> I'm sure they're all sitting home listening to this podcast, <laughs> this commentary. <laughs> from, from, uh, from, uh, they're all listening to Now, the New, Day, the New Day might be listening to this because they all like comic books. Yeah, so. So. If you're listening, if you, if you, yeah. If you want to come on our show. If, uh, ex oh, man. They have their own podcast. It's amazing. But anyway. I'm still trying to get, uh, you know, Tiffany Smith who plays Andra. That's the revelation <laughs> on our show. Um, come on, I'm getting, a, I'm getting an Andra figure sent from the U.S. all the way to Canada. The least you could do is come on our show. <laughs> hey, yep. I get such, such a charge out of, uh, it's amazing here. It's been an honor. Yeah. How much heart goes into this? This is why I don't understand when hey, people say, you know, there was a time in, in you know, um, from <clears throat> when rebirth started all the way to through to this show <clears throat> where Warner Brothers really did try and, and, and push Green Lantern. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there, I, was I just, there was a lot of weird circumstances that yeah. things came together. A lot of unfortunate things came together at the same time. But I, I just don't understand like, when, when certain uh, segments of fans say, Oh no, you know, they've never given Green Lantern a, a, a chance to shine. No pun intended. I don't agree with that. <laughs> they did. And you can make the case, I think, that they've been overly <laughs> gun-shy since all this happened. But they did make an effort back, you know, a little over 10 years ago well, you to get understand. Green Lantern to the forefront. Right. And, but I understand the hesitancy when between this and the live-action movie, right? They put a lot of money oh, yes. into both. Yes. And when that money doesn't, when that return on investment doesn't, doesn't come, they're going to be a little yeah. skittish before they try again. Because to a studio, you know, there's only one kind of green that matters for them. Yeah. And it's not the kind from the central power battery. Right. So, but thankfully, it seems like we're regrouping and getting, getting ready to gear up again where Green Lantern is concerned. Mm. <laughs> Hal's laying the smack down. He certainly is. And again, I really love the one on one segments with the Drosselis. You think there. And I like the development here, too, that you, all of a sudden, you know, you see that Razor has a death wish. Yeah, yeah. You know, he feels guilty for what he's done. 
Yeah. It gave him a personality. And it also gives Hal a chance to do the right thing. You know, Dom, I'm not going to kill you. You're going to, you know, make amends for what you've done. Yeah. Which I'm still going to smack you around a little bit. Which is really, I, I think, the, the overall sort of modus operandi of the Green Lantern, right? Uh, as, yeah. as a core, as a, you know, they're... And again, starting this episode off like this, you, like there's really that you get that sense of exploring new worlds, you know, new and yeah. again taking it back towards Star Trek comparisons. I also like that little detail there with where Killawall just kind of slumped over, showing that using your willpower to do something like that, you know, it's draining. It tires you out. Yeah. Yes. I do like that. Yeah. That's something really only a show can can show effectively because in a comic book they can draw you know a tired lantern or mm-hmm. or, or, or the dialogue could say it but, but when you see something like that visually, right? It, they it can just adds... Although Green Arrow, Green Arrow said one time that when he used a Green Lantern ring and, and Green Lantern Rebirth that it was like losing a week of sleep yeah. all at once. But, but like some people, sometimes they do acknowledge it. Other mm-hmm. times they don't, right? So yeah. Uh, so yeah, I mean, you know, there are when you talk about eighty years of storytelling, there's going to be some details that conflict. You know, not everything is going to be in the same continuity. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, so it's it's. I, I, um, this is just such a, uh, this was such a great way to introduce uh, general audiences to this mythology. It really was. And I, I was really sad that we didn't get to see the continuation with Razor becoming a blue lantern yeah okay well that's all for now we'll be back with more future yeah. episodes a great start to the season though i, I thought you know Ex- oh man it, it really does started off every- and yeah it does everything it, it it gives you that you know the the the, the general you know you know, frequently asked questions in terms of green lantern like it fills those in uh and I love the fact that, yes, there is some, like you talk off the top, some Hal and Carol, and they mm-hmm. kind of tease that relationship. But um, they didn't belabor the point with right, that. They go, they go right into space, and, uh, and they tell you, you know, this is going to be, Explore, you're going to explore a lot of new worlds and, and, and see a lot of new species and such like that. So, I, And that's I, really the allure of Green Lantern. Absolutely. I mean, absolutely. There, yeah, there, there are plenty of hero movies and shows out there, you know, about relationships and, and about, you know, the hero discovering his or her power. And, that, and that's valid, too. But with yeah. this, you're talking about a, a huge backdrop a plethora of characters and just a huge mythos with a lot of really interesting aspects. And they established that right away. And that's what I appreciate about this series so much. And I'm glad that they gave us the first two episodes back to back. Really. uh, It, 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 you, you get, as much bang for your buck as you can. 
Mm-hmm. But it leaves you wanting more in a good way. Whereas, had they just released one episode, I think it would have felt, you know, things would have felt incomplete. Mm-hmm. And because, you know, you've, we've seen with certain live action shows, when a streamer, you know, because we've gotten used to releasing two or three episodes in, uh, in the first shot, right? And then going to a, a weekly schedule. So, uh, but, and, and I've seen, I can't remember what show it was, they released one episode. I think it was Book of Boba Fett. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people were disappointed because they said, well, I, I expected more, I expected more. You don't have to worry about that with the Green Lantern because they gave you so much in that in that two-parter released as one, one shot, that your anticipation is, I can't wait to see more. Whereas right. Some, and I, I know what you're talking about with Book yeah. of Boba Fett because yeah. like the first episode was only like 21 minutes or something. Yeah, and fans were like, I expected more. So it, it left you... Right. Well, both leave you, both shows leave you wanting, but one leaves you wanting in a good way, and one leaves you mm-hmm. scratching your head and thinking, is this, what, yeah. is this all it's going to be? You know what I mean? So Yeah, yeah just short, yeah. Although I really did do think that the book of Boba Fett came off... Oh, absolutely. Uh, the yeah. end of it, yeah, was yeah. really good. So yeah, not that's another you. podcast. We'll talk about Star Wars on another day. So Absolutely. But, but the overall, this was a great start, and uh, just rewatching this... Has me re- reinvigorated and excited for the rewatch. So, looking forward to. Uh, yeah, this was fun, buddy. I can't wait to do it again. To continue, but if people want to talk with you more specifically about this Green Lantern animated series, where do they do that, Johnny? You can find me on Twitter as the Emerald Enthusiast. Let's talk comics. Let's talk collectibles. Let's talk Green Lantern poses. And if you want to. Discuss Green Lantern with me, you can at Adam underscore Lee's fan on Twitter. The podcast network has its own Twitter handle as well, at MMNPDC. We also have a Facebook group, which is somewhere in the link below. Click that. I will add you and we can continue the conversation there if you so choose. But Donnie, just before we go, what's the name of the ship again? The Interceptor? The Interceptor. All right. Well, in that case, remember that the Green Lantern animated series, despite only being one season, is forever. From the first mission aboard the Interceptor to the last. So long, everybody. So long, everyone.